Hello, and welcome to Together Ride Live, the show you look forward to each month because it's guaranteed to be better than the Academy Awards. I'm your co-host, Bob Belcher from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> My name is Gonzalo Garcia. I'm the Senior Outreach Manager for Together Ride. Uh, I don't know about Bob Belcher. I see it a little bit, but I've always said you remind me of Sam the Eagle from Sesame Street. And I happen to send our producers a side by side image. If they could throw that on the screen, it's a little surprise for you. Right? <laughs> Sam the Eagle. There you go. <laughs> well, you can be Bob if you want. All right, we have a show to produce. My name is Abron Tiveros. I'm the Senior Outreach Coordinator for the Together Ride, and I'm your other co-host for Together Ride Live. We can figure out which cartoon character I look like later, but I missed y'all last month. I was having a fabulous vacation, but um, didn't R do such a great job in my absence? Props to R for co-hosting an amazing show. She really saved your butt, Gonzalo, when your internet crashed and you couldn't host most of the show. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Albert. I, I missed everything you just said. My internet crashed. But if you were saying how amazing R was last month, I agree. They were the best co-host ever. This show is brought to you by Shade. <laughs> I can't believe it's already <laughs> May. Uh, hit us up in the chat. And did you know that uh, May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month? So hit us up in the chat and let us know what is going on in your neighborhood uh, in celebration and commemoration. Uh, it's great. The next month, it's going to be fun to head outside and join in the local festivities. I'm definitely loving the weather, the flora, and the fauna. So how are you spending your weekend? Uh, respond in the chat. I'll check it in a bit. Albert, what do you have planned this weekend? I'm actually going to be with Flora and Fauna, too. They're two drag queen friends of mine from San Francisco. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I just got some new cycling shoes and got my bike tuned up. So I'm really looking forward to getting on my bike and enjoying this amazing weather this weekend. What are you going to be doing, Gonzalo? Uh, well, tomorrow I am celebrating my friend's eighth birthday, little Monty. Uh, he is the son of my best friend. And we're throwing him a little party after his Little League game. So that'll be fun. Uh, but enough about our exciting lives. Let's see what you've been up to this past month in fundraising. Albert, please take it away. Yes, fundraising. But first, I wanted to say happy birthday to Monty. Thank you so much for everything you've been doing for the Together Ride, our youngest participant. Happy, happy birthday. I hope you have a great one. Okay. Back to fundraising. So uh, we are less than 60 days away from the end of our Together Right season. Can you believe it? Um, before I jump in with our dollars today and top individual fundraisers, I wanna take a moment to shout out and give kudos to our top 50 fundraisers. This is incredible. Our top 50 fundraisers have raised collectively uh, a half million dollars. That's 50 people collectively have raised a half a million dollars. That is absolutely incredible. That means that our top 50 fundraisers account for one third of our overall fundraising. And if you know math, I don't, but it's in my script. I'm reading it. If you know math, that means that we have raised over $1.5 million. We did it, y'all. We hit the $1.5 million mark. So I hope you're hooting, hollering, and cheering because I am. I'm so proud of all of us. We've been working really hard and we hit the 1.5. So let's keep it going. We have also logged over 584,000 miles, which is also incredible. I bet we could get, maybe we can get past the six, uh, 600,000 miles this weekend. Who knows? Uh, let's all get on our bikes and log some miles for sure. Okay, let's see who is leading us in fundraising. Let's throw up our top five individual fundraisers first. These are our top five fundraising humans. In first place, we have Bill Shopoff with over $46,000. Incredible. Uh, we have Frank Duff in second place with over $32,000. Uh, we have R. Scott Creighton in third place with over $26,000. Robert Kwan with over $23,000. And Will Ajoy with over $21,000. That's incredible. So much money. Those top five humans are really, really working hard, and it shows. Thank you guys for your commitment and all your efforts. Uh, all right, our data scientists have created more team stats so that we can celebrate more of our team. So let's check that out right now. 
The team with the highest donations per team member is team totally awesome at 40 donations per member. What a very accurate team name. Totally awesome. Hats off to team captain Otis Morgan and team totally awesome on some great fundraising. The team with the highest average donation is uh, Team Adobe, led by Michael Schumann, with each donation averaging $800. That's incredible. That's a lot of money. Great job. And uh, the team whose members have earned the most $1,500 jersey thank you gifts is Team Newberry Republic, with 28 members earning their uh, $1,500 jersey. Thank you to Team Newberry Republic, all of the bears, otters, and all the other furry woodland creatures that are working very hard to raise money for the Together Ride. You guys are kicking butt. It's amazing. Congrats to everyone for rocking your fundraising and launching us past our $1.5 million. We are less than 60 days away from the end of the Together Ride season. We are calling on all of our Together Ride, our Together Riders to commit to logging 60 miles or 60 minutes of activity this weekend and asking your friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, also known as everybody you know, to pledge a dollar per minute or mile and honor our final 60 days by making a big impact with us. Shout out on the chat. Let us know what are you going to do this weekend so you can log your miles or make that money, honey. What you're up to this weekend? All right, well, I'm going to check the chat to see who is here. Um, I just want to say hi to Tony Gonzalez. He is one of uh, our participants in the chat. Ken Cook and Wendy Hiller. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. I hope you guys are having a great Friday and hope you're going to have a great weekend ahead of you. Well, up next, I'm very excited for this next segment as part of Together Rides month-long spotlight on HIV testing and tracing. Together Ride In Conversation, Sexual Health Testing and HIV will broadcast on May 19th at 1 p.m. Pacific. And on today's show, we're talking with Together Ride participant, Michael Brighton Eisman. Michael is a well-loved and respected member of the AIDS lifecycle community. He's been involved with the ride and the Los Angeles LGBT Center since 2012 and is currently captain of Team FUBAR. When he's not busy cycling or advocating, he's CEO of a brand new apparel company, Heart on Apparel, a force for positive change in the world by focusing on activism, community, social responsibility, and of course, clothing. And guess what? They launched today. That's super exciting. I can't wait to hear more. Let's welcome Michael to the show. Hello, Michael. Yay, welcome, Michael. Hi, how's it going? It's Thank you all so good. much Michael, for having congratulations. me. I'm really happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Congratulations on your new clothing line, Heart On Clothing. Love a good heart on. That's amazing. Hey, Michael, you've been such a strong advocate for the Los Angeles LGBT <laughs> Center and the work that we do at the Together Ride. So let's break it down. Let's take it back to the beginning for everyone. Um, tell us, what was it that uh, got you to get involved with the center? Uh, yeah, so in um, the summer of 2012, uh, during a routine doctor's visit, um, my doctor came in after reviewing some of my blood work and said, you know, uh, you're really healthy with the exception of the fact that you're HIV positive. And, uh, so it came as a bit of a shock to me. And, uh, shortly thereafter, she also let me know that she did not feel comfortable treating someone in a, uh, in my condition was her exact words. Uh, so I, uh, it, to make matters worse, I had also just lost my job and I found myself in a pretty hopeless situation. I met somebody literally a week later who had just finished AIDS Life Cycle 2012. And um, he was telling me all about how excited he was uh, about the ride. And I, uh, being in the situation that I was in, I asked him if he knew where I could get help. And he personally took me to the center. Um, whenever he, uh, uh, whenever we arrived, I was welcomed with open arms. I was treated with the utmost respect and love and kindness. And, uh, I was on treatment within a few days and I was undetectable within six weeks. Um, after that happened, I, I felt like really, really intensely that I owed the center of my life. And I, uh, signed up for AIDS life cycle, uh, the same day that I got my uh, diagnosis of being, um, 
of being undetectable. And I've been riding ever since. Thank you awesome. for sharing that story with us and being so candid. Uh, you and I have known each other for many, many years. And I know that you're very passionate about destigmatizing HIV, specifically on how we test uh, trace and how we treat it. Can you elaborate on this a little bit for us? Oh, I think we lost oh. Michael's feed. Oh no. Okay, welcome well we can see if, if live. Welcome to live show with Baron and Gonzalo. We'll see if, if Michael comes back on and if he does, we'll jump right back into um, our interview section with him. But you can find out more about uh, Michael's new clothing line, Heart On Clothing at shophearton.com or at shophearton on all social media platforms. Thank you to Michael for being here. Hopefully he comes back and we'll pick back up on that interview. Um, but if not, you can find him on the social medias. Well, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into another part of the show. Uh, and it's one of my favorite parts of the show. And it's gonna be the last time we play this game. So let's get ready for Together Round. <music> Joining us today are Carrie Liggett and Zui No, one of our newest corporate teams, they're part of our newest corporate team, CBRE. Carrie hails from Northern California and Zui is from Southern California. And even though they're great coworkers, today they're gonna to be battling each other for the title. This month's Together Round questions are about HIV testing and tracing. So let's welcome our contestants to the show. Hello, Zui, hello, Carrie. Hi, Gonzalo. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Zui. Nice, nice to see you guys. All right, I'm gonna jump in with some fun facts about each of you. We'll start with Carrie. Fun fact about Carrie, she loves animation, cinematography, and photography. In middle school, she made a documentary about the water quality for a science project. And in high school, she made a sketch comedy show called Saturday Not So Live. So Carrie, are these available on YouTube? And please tell me a little bit more about your love for animation and producing these shorts. <laughs> um, Gonzalo, they are not available on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I, you know, segued into commercial real estate for a reason, I think, but um, yeah, I had a lot of fun making these. I lived in a small village, um, oldest of five. So my brothers and sisters were my actors, fortunately, and had a lot of fun doing this. And my video production maybe has just migrated into a real love of photography, giving me an opportunity to get outdoors and soak in the great environment. But Nice. Awesome. Now, fun fact about Zui, from about four to eight years old, he lived in mostly Catholic convents raised by nuns in the convents. So Zui, what are some of your most joyous memories from that time? Oh, there's so many joyous moments. Um, very memorable time of my life, actually. Uh, but, you know, I always uh, remember my time spending with one particular nun who every night would have me sit by her having me picked her gray hair from her head, each one <laughs> until I'm done. You had to pick her gray hairs. Did anybody That's actually right. see the hair? Did anybody see her hair? <laughs> At any, I'm she just counted everyone. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, thank you for that story. I have one more question to get, the, to, get to know the two of you. Tell us a little bit about the company you work for, CBRE, and why you thought it was important to start a corporate team for Together Ride. Carrie, let me know, because you're the sure. one who started the team. Sure, yeah. Happy uh, to talk about it. Um, CBRE is a global real estate company. We specialize in advisory, workplace solutions, and investments. And we have a, a huge uh, diversity and inclusion platform. Very proud of that. And actually, fun fact, Gonzalo, about CBRE, we have been on HRC's Best Places to Work Corporate Equality Index for eight consecutive years with perfect scores. 
So um, we have uh, employee business resource groups, and that's where I pitched this idea with the LGBTQ and A group. And we, it, I think it really caught on because it's in alignment with our values, and we really love the twist of having all that different activities to participate. And I pitched it, but it was really everybody else's love and and um, I think the alignment with the values that why it caught on. What do you think, Zui? I think that's a great answer. And I myself, a cyclist, love the idea of being able to cycle my way toward a good goal. Uh, and in addition to that, in, at CBRE, we strive to be a leader in our, in our industry. And the same way that we are doing that, we wanna be a leader in our community as well. Listening to Michael's story, earlier that really inspired me. And that's one of the reasons why I, I want to do what I do with uh, To Get A Ride. Well, thank you. Thank you both for really just jumping in and starting the team. It's been a pleasure watching you guys uh, take charge and become captains. So thank you from me and everybody at the center and the foundation. All right. Here are the together round rules. Each of you will be given a series of lightning fill in the blank questions. And your goal is to answer as many as you can in 60 seconds. Each correct answer will get two points. The person with the highest score at the end of the round will be the together round champion. Love a good sound effect. All right, Harry, <laughs> you're up first. We're gonna take Zui off the screen. We're gonna mute you. Carrie, are you ready? I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna bring up the timer and that timer is going to start when I ask the first question. So, ready? Here we go. You do not need to provide blank to San Francisco AIDS Foundation to have access to be tested. Identification? Yes. While HIV wasn't discovered until 1984, the first test for HIV did not become available until blank. Oh, 1989? Oh, 85, just one year later. San Francisco AIDS Foundation recommends that you get tested every blank month if you're sexually active or if you inject drugs. Every other month? Every three to six months. In the television show Blank, Rose is afraid that a blood transfusion she had received several years ago may have contained HIV infected blood as she awaits her test results. I only know one Rose, was like Golden Girls. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you got that one. <laughs> I was gonna be very upset if you didn't get the Golden Girls, Carrie. Very upset. <laughs> Redeem myself. Good job. <laughs> um, let's go take a look at your score. Good job. Four points. Awesome, Carrie. All right, we're gonna say goodbye to you for a few minutes while we bring Zwe back on the screen. I was gonna say phone, but not the phone screen. Are we ready? Do do do. Hi, Zwe. All right, I'm just adjusting uh, I window know. here. All right, let's bring up that timer. Are you ready? The timer's gonna start. I think so. I the first question. Great. Let's do it. All right, here we go. According to the most recent CDC data, roughly blank million people in the United States are living with HIV. 1.2 million. Yes. Many new infections are transmitted by people who do not know the blank. That they're HIV positive. That they're infected. Yes, we'll take that. Although testing is completely confidential, people are afraid to get tested because of blank. Stigmas. Yes. Julia Roberts played Dr. Emma Bruckner in the iconic movie, Blank about when the first HIV antibody test became available in the early days of the epidemic. Uh, also I don't know that one. Oh, We're looking for uh, the normal hearts. Oh, sorry, I answered for uh, you. Ah! 
<laughs> Some people may have worked on it. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> All right, I thought, thought you said you didn't know it, so I gave you the answer. <laughs> Can I can I get that half point maybe? <laughs> we'll give you we'll give you a half point for that because I screwed up. So Kathleen, my my producer, please give him a one point for that. <laughs> All right, let's bring back Carrie to announce the winner. Zwi, you won. Congratulations, you are now. The Together Round Champion. Congratulations, we! Yay! Thank you. Well done, Carrie. <laughs> well done. Carrie, good job. <laughs> Carrie, you did a great job. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so All much. right, you guys. I just want to thank Carrie and Zwi for being our personal champions in the fight against HIV AIDS and our fearless contestants on Together Round. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, you two. I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Gonzalo. You too. Take care. You too. Take care. Bye, Carrie. Thank you to our Together Round um, contestants, and I'm very happy to say that we have um, Michael back. Michael is back, uh, and we can continue um, talking to Michael. Uh, and uh, Gonzalo, you had just asked uh, Michael a question. Do you want to follow up from right there? Yes. Yes, um, I was saying that we've known each other for many years, and I know that you're very passionate about yeah. destigmatizing HIV, especially on how we test and how we trace and how we treat it. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, so sorry about the dropout, guys. I'm not sure what's going on with my uh, computer over here. Uh, but yeah, um, so I... Um, I actually think that we we have to look at uh, the stigma around testing in reverse. I think uh, I think that one of our biggest problems is actually the stigma around HIV uh, positive people. Um, I think if if we kind of dispel that image of folks, uh, you know, dying in hospital beds, the you know the kind of imagery that we saw in the '80s and '90s, whenever the pandemic was was uh, you know new and treatments had not been fully developed yet. Um, and, and we look at what's happening now, which is that people on treatment, you know, lead perfectly normal, happy, healthy lives. Uh, people who are undetectable, uh, you know, are are not able to transmit the virus to other people, uh, even if they have unprotected sex. I think I think that when we start talking about that and start uh, uh, portraying HIV as yes, it's something you don't want to get, but if you do, your life is one hundred percent not over, and you you're going to be okay. I think that that's where it starts, and then we move down from there. And you know, we need to destigmatize PrEP by uh, by acknowledging that it is a one hundred percent safe and effective way to prevent HIV. And then finally, we need to normalize getting tested in the same way that we've normalized going to the eye doctor and the dentist. Like you know, if if we were to say, oh yeah, it's been three months, time for me to go get tested. It, it, it would be a lot easier than, you know, uh, trying to rope people into going and getting tested because they've had a close call or maybe a, an experience where they weren't necessarily safe. Um, yeah, the, the whole problem is is that we, we need to get rid of this thought process that, uh, you know, your life is over. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't want to ramble on because I could talk about this all day. Uh, and so can we, right? That's why we're here. We love chatting with you. Um, I yeah. couldn't agree more, you know, the, the need to reduce guilt, stigma, and shame is so radically important. You really hit that one on the nail. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot has changed since your diagnosis. Um, like there's more prevention options such as PrEP and mm -hmm. people can get their results so much faster now. Um, are there any uh, advancements in uh, prevention, testing, and treatment that you're excited about right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, r uh, my The thing I'm most excited about is uh, earlier this year, the FDA, I, I believe it was in February, approved the very first uh, monthly injectable HIV uh, treatment that can also be used for PrEP. Uh, and uh, that's a game changer. Uh, the idea that um, folks won't have to take a pill every day, that they could just get a monthly injection and they keep themselves safe and undetectable at HIV, or if they're negative, they would be able to um, they'd be able to instead of taking a pill once a uh, once a day in order to uh, stay negative, they'd be able to get a monthly injection. I think that's huge. Uh, those are the things I'm most excited about right now. Uh, again, 
I could talk about this subject all day. You're right. It's something I'm very passionate about, but injectables is going to be a game changer in the fight against HIV. Uh, I'm very excited that that is coming out. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, barriers when uh, people think that they're going to get a positive diagnosis. Uh, that can be a barrier to getting tested and seeking mm -hmm. help. What would you say to somebody who is on the fence about getting uh, an HIV or an STI test? Yeah, uh, so I I want to answer that by telling just like a, a 10 second story. Uh, earlier, uh, about a month ago, uh, earlier this month or earlier in April, a friend of mine asked me, you know, if you had a time machine and you could go back and stop yourself from becoming HIV positive, would you? And, and I responded, no. Uh, I, uh, I, I talked to him and I explained to him, you know, it was an inflection point in my life where, uh, yes, it seems like a terrible thing. And obviously, you know, it, it, I don't, I never wanted to be HIV positive, but at the same time, uh, so many good things have come out of my life that, uh, that are a direct result of it, that I wouldn't change it. Now that said, if I was talking to somebody who was on the uh, fence about going and getting tested, I would just tell them, I'm a great example of if you get the result you don't want you'll be okay. Uh, treatment is at a place at this point, uh, you'll, you'll lead a perfectly normal, happy, healthy life. Uh, your sex life is 100%, I can assure you, not over. Uh, and uh, you, you have nothing to fear from the perspective of, uh, of, of being able to go on about your life. Um, the other thing I would say to them is, is that knowledge is power. Uh, the, the fact is, is that just because you haven't gone and gotten tested does not mean the result is not already a fact. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's a Schrodinger's cat type situation, whether or not you're tested, uh, you, you do in fact, or you do in fact need to know if you're positive or not, because, uh, if you are positive, you're, you're spreading the disease. And if you're not positive, you're worried about something that might not even be a reality. Well, Michael, you make a really good point that we have come a very long way in our fight against HIV and AIDS and um, a long way with treatment and testing. Um, thank you so much for being here. I think a good takeaway from this conversation is for everyone to ask yourself, when was the last time that you got tested? And uh, when was the last time that you asked your partner or partners uh, when they've been tested? Uh, you can find out more uh, about our testing at sfaf.org and lalgbtcenter.org. Um, and you can learn more about Michael and his amazing apparel company at shophearton.com or at shophearton on all of our social media platforms. Uh, Michael, thank you again so much for being here. I'm glad we were able to get you back online with us. Um, your shirt looks amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm an extra large bear. Oh, so thank we'll you. Glad about getting me a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a medium. Um, we've thanks. got your size in stock. We've got both your Wonderful. sizes in stock. I can't wait. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, you. Michael. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. And um, let's wrap up today's show. Um, so did you guys know that we have a new exciting item in the camp store? Uh, you can show your Together Ride pride in full color on the road in these new tie-dye threads. Check them out. So colorful. The jersey can be paired with either bibs or shorts or whatever you prefer to wear while you're racking up those miles in the saddle. Visit togetherride.org slash store, or you can scan the QR code on the screen with your phone to visit the shop and grab yours today. Now, here are your three key takeaways for the month of May. We are officially less than 60 days from the end of our Together Ride season. Can you believe it? Uh, we are calling on all of our Together Riders to commit to logging 60 miles or minutes of activity this weekend and asking your friends, family, and coworkers, also known as everyone you know, to pledge a dollar per minute or mile and honor our final 60 days by making a big impact with us. Let's go in, let's go hard, let's make some money moves, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, second, Together Ride presents Frankie Grande's second annual Rainbow Thon on Thursday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm so excited for this one. Um, it's the gayest, most prideful show on earth <laughs> in its second year. Rainbow Thon will be hosted by Frankie Grande and will benefit the HIV and AIDS services of the Los Angeles LGBT Center via Together Ride. It will feature unforgettable performances and appearances by some of the center's notable supporters, as well as Broadway and pop stars, y'all. It will be a show you won't soon forget. You know, Frankie always puts on an amazing show. I'm just so excited. Um, 
And lastly, check out this month's In Conversation. Sexual health testing and HIV will be live on Wednesday, May 19th at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Don't watch it alone. Invite a friend, a family member, anyone that you want to share the amazing work of the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and the Los Angeles LGBT Center with. Show them what you're working so hard to raise money for. Well, folks, that's it for the May Together Ride Live. We're going to see you next month as we wrap up this inaugural season of Together Ride. And with that, have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you, Sam the Eagle. Bye, everyone. <laughs>